you can refuse to die and I want to share with you the keys listen please hear me when we teach on longevity and when we teach you the keys that make for victory over it's not the fear of death as for the believer in Christ though whether it is in this life or after this life you are victorious forever so please understand that this is not some Pentecostal way of managing death no or managing the fear of death we have left the issue of the fear of death but our longevity is important for ourselves our families the purposes of God the continuity of God's program this is not an issue of death. Paul said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. There is a way believers transit in victory and with honor. Paul said, I have fought the, f I, I, I fought the fight of faith. I have finished my course. Jesus himself said, it is finished. He was not surprised. What are the kingdom mysteries? What are the keys? Please, I beseech you in the name of Jesus. I can go down my knees for you if you want me to. To listen and pay attention to what I'm telling you. Because for some of you, this will be the lifeline. It will be literally the lifeline between now and the, the continuity of your effective living. Please pay attention. This is more than a sermon. Tonight's message is an instrument of deliverance that God is bringing to you. And for those following online, I want you to pay attention. You may need to call somebody and say, connect now. You are about to hear something and receive an impartation. Do you know that there are people scheduled to die every week? Right now is Sunday. There are people based in the realm of the spirit. They are already dead. By Saturday, you will see Abba that you found your way here or you have connected yourself here by the privilege of God's grace I announce to you again that plot is destroyed forever all right let's write when we say I shall not die it is beyond just mere speaking it takes more than a wish there are kingdom keys that have been allotted for the saints remember that victory in this kingdom is light dependent are we together key number one are you ready the first key based on the word of god that guarantees longevity is submitting to jesus who is the resurrection and the life write it down please the first key that guarantees longevity is submitting to jesus who the Bible calls the resurrection and the life. Your encounter with the resurrection and the life is your surest guarantee. The resurrection and the life. In John 4 and verse 16, Jesus said, John 4, 16, please give it to us. My apologies. John 11, John 11, from verse 25 to 26. John 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 26. And whosoever liveth and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? It's up to you to answer. Are we together? So you must submit. It is a risk to know that Satan is determined to cut short your life if allowed and then not submit genuinely to the resurrection and the life. When you are sick, medically speaking, you don't run to a carpenter for help. Is that true? You don't run to a carpentry shop. You run to a pharmacist or to a hospital the one who addresses your situation jesus did not just call himself the way the truth and the life jesus did not just call himself the apostle of our faith jesus did not just call himself the high priest in this regard he calls himself the resurrection 
and the life. So your first key to walking in longevity biblically is submitting to Jesus the resurrection and the life. Number two, very quickly, is someone learning? The second biblical key that is responsible for the longevity of the saints that gives you immunity and victory over untimely death is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the spirit of reverence. Please write it down. The fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. Proverbs 10, 27. The Bible says the fear of the Lord prolonged days. Look at it. The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Is that in your Bible? The fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It means to honor him. It means to revere him. It means to respect him. And the clearest proof of the fear of the Lord is obedience. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. Proverbs chapter 9. Let's look at 10 and 11. Proverbs 9, 10 and 11. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 11. It says for by me. The fear of the Lord now, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Shout a loud amen. amen. I declare that the baptism of the fear of the Lord will rest upon your heart tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 3, we're examining the second key. Please do not forget what I'm teaching you. Number one, submitting to the authority and the logic of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Now number two, the fear of the Lord. It says, my son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Verse 2, it says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Verse 3, or oh, well, just 1 and 2, that's fine. Length of days and peace shall they add to thee. In 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, let's read verse 14. This was Solomon's encounter with the God of the Bible in a dream. It says, 1 Kings 3, 14, And if thou wilt walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. So longevity is not just the issue of claiming. There is a way that you fear the Lord determined to obey him that no devil will cut short your life before your time. Number three, because I want us to pray tonight. Are you ready? The third key that the Bible teaches is the power of scripture-based confession. The power of scripture-based confession. You want to drive untimely death far from you? There is a role that your mouth and your speaking has to play. Psalms 34 from verse 12 down to 14. Please give it to us. Psalms 34, 12 to 14. He said, what man, Apostle Peter repeated this now in the New Testament. What man is he that desired life and loveth many days that he may see good? It's a question. Who is the person who is interested in having long life and many days? What's the condition? 13. He says... Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking deceit or guile. He, he tells you that every time you speak, your words have an implication on your longevity or otherwise. Now, most people think it does not matter. 
there are negative words this is not about some pentecostalism there is a there is a kingdom way that we speak even from a medical standpoint there you begin to speak negatively negatively about your life and about others you are on your way to your grave early and it should not be so hallelujah ah i don't die nigeria the realm of the spirit does not care whether you are joking it records it and it becomes a tool for execution hallelujah there are some things you should not say about yourself no no it's not about being a baby christian or being mature this is the modus operandi of the kingdom if you desire to walk in longevity to walk in the fullness of the days ordained for you your speaking matters hallelujah is someone already learning speakings proverbs 18 21 popular scripture 18 21 proverbs death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof what is the fruit of death i mean death and life are both fruits and it's interesting that the same tongue can produce any one of them in the name of jesus this is the day the lord has made i declare that i rejoice in it and i am glad hallelujah i enjoy longevity and health not longevity and pain in the name of jesus long life is my portion in christ and i decree and declare it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion in the earth thereof you don't speak death speak negative this is more than positive confession this is not just psychology although that is profitable in itself but we are talking of a scripture based confession you are declaring to create you are declaring to maintain are we together now words are so powerful that jesus himself calls himself the word the logos of god i shall not die but leave and declare the works of the lord amen that's my confession i truly believe it that i shall not die but leave and declare the works of the lord amen sing it one more time from your heart i shall not die but leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So from tonight, Koinonia, hear me. Teach your children. Husband, change your confession. Wife, change your confession. Parents, change your confession. Children, man of God, lead us. Start speaking to be consistent with the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. I decree and declare that the life of God flows through me. I decree and declare that length of days is my portion in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Many, many people made noise. They laughed at those confessing the word. Some of those people are not alive today. And some of the people with childlike faith who kept speaking after many decades, they are still standing. Ah. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord please hear me ladies and gentlemen I want to tell you that words matter. Words matter. The first fall and destruction of a man came because of something he heard. When man fell, the Lord came to the garden and said, Adam, where art thou? He said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you? You expose your ears to something and to someone. 
And in addition to speakings, manage the things that get into your eye and your ear gate. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. These are not elementary spiritual things at all. Most of you authorize demons to begin to afflict you because you expose yourself to content that you were not supposed to expose your mind to. Hallelujah. Be careful from reading all kinds of nonsense magic books. There are people today, and let me say it especially to younger people who are in ministry. Let your search for revelation not lead you to demonic things where you go and encounter all kinds of spirits, books of the dead, because you are trying to access realms, 15 dimensions of consciousness, and you start reading those things until you find yourself there. You come back with all kinds of familiar spirits, sufficient for your growth and your excelling is the truth that is contained in scripture the bible says many listen it says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book give it to us john 20 please the last verse that would be verse what now verse the last please look for it for us john 20 the last verse i want to show you that scripture it says many miracles that jesus did John chapter 20 and many verse 30 thank you many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not written in this book next verse please 31 it says but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name so it is true that it is not everything that happened that was recorded in scripture but by the intelligence of the spirit the scripture as contained in this already has with the breath of the spirit the leadership of the spirit can supply you every kind of growth you seek it doesn't mean that extra biblical materials concordances and all of the rest are bad but you must be guided there are many believers who have not been guided and they started reading all kinds of books books that start teaching you about consciousness and start exposing you you start exposing some of those things they are saying are not lies but they are very deep spiritual things it takes a level of stability in the spirit and conviction to dare those materials because they sustain the power to sway you be careful number four what is the fourth biblical key that controls longevity are you ready honor to parents honor to parents honor to parents both physical and spiritual honor to parents Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3 please give it to us honor to parents the fourth key now children it says obey your parents in the Lord please take note of the expression in the Lord it didn't say children obey your parents anyhow whatever they say mm -mm. children obey your parents in the Lord that means the parents are not the final say the Word of God is final say I need to say this I am an advocate of honor but we need to be careful because many people have been derailed because of this scripture and because it was misunderstood obey your parents in the Lord for this is right verse 2 it says honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with promise verse 3 that it may be well with thee and that thou mightest live long upon the earth please look up the spirit of rebellion the spirit of dishonor will always cut short the life of the victim unfortunately our generation except God helps us corporately we're beginning to embrace dishonor it's beginning to be fashionable people say it doesn't matter it's my life but you see there are laws I pray that dishonor will not make our generation cost because of the ill speakings that come from the pain of parents hallelujah there are many many people today that it is not well with them 
because they have secured the causes and the ill speakings of parents and let me tell you when it has to do with parents bar whether they are born again or not by reason of being parents or being in a position of parents there is authority that was given to them they can speak and the realm of the spirit will obey and let me declare over someone if either by your mistake or maybe your past or not having any knowledge you have secured the cause or the ill speaking of any parent any father any mother physically or spiritually by the mystery of the blood and the mercy of God that statement is cancelled right now yeah. hallelujah now I must bring a disclaimer we men of God like scriptures like this unfortunately because it has been a useful tool for manipulation through the years there is a balance to this it does not mean just because people are asked to honor leaders spiritual leaders especially it does not mean that people should remove their brains and throw away and become children and become fools no there is intelligence in our faith work are we together now yes so there is a balance however honor still remains a potent spiritual law that is responsible for longevity honor to parents honor to fathers when God plants you within a ministry honor the authority structure that he has put there are we together this spirit of rebellion that many have carried has has become their unbecoming you continue to spell destruction for yourself it ought not to be so there is a way that the kingdom operates if we're together say amen. amen honor to parents Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20 Proverbs 20 20 in fact when we read it let's see how we can try NIV the Bible said who so corset his father or his mother listen carefully he said his lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness let me tell you how it works in the spirit if a father fights his son he loses his honor if a son fights his father he loses his life there are allocations to these offenses in the spirit you see that yes same scripture 2020 if a man causes his father or mother he says his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness this is true there are many many people who have put themselves in this unfortunate condition physically and spiritually across the globe because of lack of intelligence and remember you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth Number five, thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning? What is the fifth key? Are you ready? Engaging the mystery of the communion. The fifth key that is responsible for longevity, engaging with understanding the mystery of the communion. engaging the mystery of the communion first Corinthians chapter 11 please from verse 24 Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he was now speaking about the Lord's body we are reading to 30 please pay attention and he that had and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me now he begins to warn for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes 27 it says wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily it is that serious that it has a spiritual implication you shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord 28 
but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup to 30 now it says for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily what does it mean to eat and drink unworthily without discernment and without revelation and without honor he says he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the lord's body let's read 30 together one to read for this cause many are weak many are sickly among you and many sleep he didn't say few that means there are many people today who have gone to the grave and their offense is that they did not discern the lord's body I've had all kinds of teachings and opinions about the communion. I can tell you by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible. The communion with understanding is a deep spiritual mystery. It can be idolized, unfortunately, like it has happened, respectfully speaking, across the body, where people have turned the communion like a, like a charm that does not contain any power. Do you understand? Remember, you are the one who made the bread and you are the one who made the cup and you are now taking it. So it is not that bread and cup that will give you life. There is a revelation that releases the power of God upon those tokens of communion. I am an advocate of the communion, but I am not an advocate of religiosity without revelation. The key is understanding, not ritual. You can be involved in the ritual of the communion and believe me, you will not receive anything from it. Hallelujah. There are people who just carry wafers, just squeeze it or bread. They just squeeze one slice or one loaf and just take tea or take something and believe they took the communion. No. The communion is not about hunger. Remember in the book of the first Corinthians, there were people who were taking it unworthily because at that time it was wine and Paul found out that people were getting drunk after, you know, the remaining part of the, the, the communion set that they leave when the service is over. Some people were taking it and don't mind all these guys. And Paul had to preach and say, you guys are making a mess of this thing. You can bring damnation upon yourself. There are stories of people who with childlike faith believed in the mystery of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and they engaged the communion with understanding and it flushed out all kinds of demonic things in their body you know the power and the mystery of blood you see in communicating spiritual truth it is not really the activity that carries power it is the understanding that supports what you are doing are you ready for number six we'll soon find somewhere to pray what is the sixth key that controls longevity? Are you ready? Master the art of spiritual warfare. Master the art of spiritual warfare. Mm, there is a warfare dimension for longevity. Master the art of spiritual warfare. There is victory in Christ, but it is engaged with knowledge. The victory in Christ does not happen arbitrarily. Not even the death on the cross automatically saves sinners until they place their faith by believing in their heart and declaring the Lordship of Jesus. That is only when, that was the only condition for salvation to be activated. So Jesus has died, risen, exalted, and yet many people still go to hell. That is the same way salvation, healing, deliverance has been purchased but just believing that because it is finished in Christ, it means it is finished in your life. Without engaging it, it will not happen. What does warfare entail? Number one, standing based on the word of God to enforce your authority. Warfare entails standing to enforce your authority based on the word of God not based on emotions not based on sentiments not based on religious chants and rituals the basis for the believers victory is what is written not what I want not what I wish there are many chants and rituals that sincerely and respectfully speaking are only a waste of time the only component in a believer speaking and prayer that commands power is that which is in line with scripture
Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 11. Proverbs 1, 11. It says, My son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Next verse. It says, Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. Reading to 16, verse 13. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our house with spoil. Look at the wicked imaginations. Cast in thy lot among us let us all have one purse 15 it says my son walk down not in the way with them refrain from the foot of their path 16 the last verse it says for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood believers please look at me spiritual warfare from a biblical standpoint and from a standpoint of victory is necessary for maintaining your longevity for as long as you live you remain a candidate for satan's attack a potential candidate the bible says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we together paul said i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us satan is still on earth there, the Bible has never told us that his ministry has ended. Read your Bible. The Bible tells us that victory over him is settled. But the Bible never says Satan has been prohibited from doing the things that he's doing. He still runs to and fro. Like a roaring, like, like, like a, uh, what they call it now? That he runs to and fro like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. May he not find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and having done all to stand, stand. Why would Paul be teaching you about the, the warfare armory? Are we together? He says to put the whole armor of God. Remember, it was the same Paul that gave us the exegesis of the, the Pauline epistle. The entire exegesis of redemption. Yet he teaches you that it is true that you are seated, exalted with Christ. But having done all to stand, stand. For many of us, we are not consistent with our prayer. For others, we are consistent with prayer, but from a standpoint of fear and defeat. Listen, you don't pray to make victory happen. You pray to establish victory that is already in Christ. There is a big difference. There is praying and you feel, okay, now let me push a little more and the devil will give way. As emotional as that sounds, you are already defeated. Believe me. Except this Bible is not true. Nobody prays from a standpoint of weakness and wins. So spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing. I have taught you. It is not the prayer that produces the victory. The prayer simply transports that which is finished in Christ and stamps it as a reality upon your life. Is it not amazing that Jesus prayed before, during, and even after his resurrection? Today that he's seated, exalted as Lord and Christ, he's still making intercession for the saints. Is he not conscious of his victory over the saints that he's still making intercession? Why will he still be interceding when he said it is finished? The fact that Jesus is still praying for you should let you know that he's aware that Satan is still on earth waging war against the saints. Why would Jesus be interceding for you? He would have said, don't say anything again. Victory is sure. Jesus, the intercessor, proves that evil is still at work. I hope you know that Satan does not fear. There is no record in scripture that Satan is associated with fear. He flees as a result of an instruction, not fear. Satan is every other thing but fearful and foolish. Two things you cannot attribute to Satan. Hallelujah. Don't sit down and let the devil destroy your health and your life. One month you find out that something is beginning to happen to you. You got up in the morning and your legs is as if you cannot walk. Later by evening, it looks like it's your back. 
The next day you find out all four children, you, you go to your office and find out files are getting missing. These are signs. Don't sit down until it gets complicated and destroys you. From its infancy, you attack it in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. This is a semblance of hell and darkness. Therefore, I stand by the authority that is in the Lord Jesus Christ and I, I rebuke this. It is your kingdom responsibility to understand warfare. There are some of you right now, the darkness that seems to be, to be roaming around your life, I'm praying for you that you will have the grace to wake up and take responsibility. I have a responsibility to pray for you, but pray for me, pray for me has landed many people to their grave. You must take responsibility as God grants you grace. Wake up in the night, especially when the seasons are already giving you a sign that this is the devil attacking you. Abide with me fast falls the eventide the darkness deepens lord with me abide when all the help has fall and comfort flee help of the helpless oh abide with Jesus, when it was time for him to get to the cross, he took out time to pray. He prayed to build stamina. He prayed, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Let me give you the last one, and then we pray. Is someone learning? The seventh key as revealed from scripture that controls longevity is walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 proverbs 3 13 we're reading down to 18 happy is the man that findeth wisdom koinonia please look up and the man that getteth understanding next verse please he said for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold 15. she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her 16 now length of days there you find it again with wisdom length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor the bible says collect both the right and the left hands are open for you as far as wisdom is concerned wisdom is a giver don't collect wealth and riches and live length of days 17 reading to 18 now her ways are the ways of pleasantness all her parts are peace she is a tree of life a tree of what life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her listen there is a very direct relationship between working in wisdom and longevity for instance paying attention to your health is wisdom paying attention to your health Revelations 22, please give it to us, verse 2. Paying attention to your health, what you eat. The Bible says, and in the midst of the street, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Let me tell you, believers, there are times that you may do everything well and kill yourself simply because of carelessness and lack of wisdom. There are many people today, this is the balance because people focus on the spirituality of longevity and then they forget the other aspects like that which pertains unto their health. Man does not live by words alone and man does not live by bread alone. If your words are correct and your bread is wrong, you will die. If your bread is correct and the words are wrong, you will die. Both bread and words have to be in place. 
This is Jesus teaching now. Are we together now? For many of us, you have done well. The words are correct. The spiritual investments are correct. But my goodness, there is death in the pot. In fact, let's go to that scripture. Death in the pot. Elisha. Let me search for it now. Death in the pot. It, 2 Kings 4 from verse 38. 2 Kings 4, 38. And Elisha came to Gilgal. And there was death in the land. Famine now. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant um can you give us niv again let me make reference to niv i just want your understanding right he says he said to his servant put on a large pot and cook some stew for this man reading to 41 next verse one of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine whatever that is we know it is not good he found a wild vine. He gathered some of its gods and filled the fold of his cloak. When he returned, he cut them into the pot of stew. Though no one knew what they were. 40. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat, remember they were prophets too, they cried out, O oh man of God, there is death in the pot how many pots today have death in it there are many pots in restaurants that have death there are many pots in our homes you think it is food you are eating the prophet said death is not only found in the grave it can be found even in the pot you can cast the one in the grave but have you casted the death that is in the pot and they could not eat it 41 Elisha said, get some flour. And he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Listen, there are many people who are careless over their bodies and their health today. And sincerely, they have the power to invest just a little in their health. There are many believers who hate medical checkup. They say, no, this is demonic. There are many believers, I've told you that science and medical people will tell us that many diseases would have been solved if the people were attentive enough to detect it at infancy and to deal with it. Most people resort to medicine as a last resort. I have taught you here, ladies and gentlemen, and for some of you who may be hearing it for the first time, medicine is not anti-spirituality my perspective of medicine i hope you know that luke was a doctor he was the disciple of jesus dr luke hallelujah it's true that jesus rose up from the dead but who, what about those who took care of his body for three days the body did not just lie down in the cold on the cross someone wrapped the woman said she came to clean the body so there is a place for medicine. Listen, listen. If you don't believe this, you will, you will rubbish yourself. It is true that divine health and healing is real. Don't get me wrong. But remember, it is a journey of transition in the spirit to attain onto that point where you can walk in health and experience. And while you are on that journey, by the time you are afflicted and you pray, and it looks like nothing is happening ladies and gentlemen even if something is happening it is wise to consult the doctors if you are truly healed medicine will not fight your miracle <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah pay attention to the kind of water you drink as God grants you grace pay attention to the kind of food you eat Many of us, you see food that is already beginning to spoil. Plus Jesus by not Satan. Amen. You just warm it in the microwave and death in the pot. You want to find out more about nutrition? Don't, I'm, I'm not the person to, there are many people who are gifted and graced. Go to the medical stand. They will guide you. It is not seen to be under very good organic supplements. They can help you. Many of these things we keep taking and feeling like we are rich. It is death. Minimize some of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And more than minimizing these things, please, I impart upon you the grace to fast. Even if 
you don't want to pray, just fast and sleep with no food. It is still a level of liberty you are administering to your body. Hallelujah. There are people who will never drink up to one bottle of water in a day. They will drink five bottles, Sprite, Coca-Cola, any other one. And you see people in a restaurant, four wraps of swallow and three kinds of soup, half of chicken, only you, and then three bottles and then one tiny pure water. You are, this is death. I, 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 I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but I owe you a responsibility to tell you it is not the manifestation of wealth. And we have all kinds of cultural things. I suffered. Now is my time. You, you, you want to live long. Remember the last key, walking in wisdom. Please laugh but pay attention. Laugh but pay attention. I'm not challenging your opinion, but let me tell you the truth. Things like drinking and smoking and all of these vices where you dump all kinds of junk into your body, you are killing yourself. You are killing yourself very fast, not even slowly. Apostle, it does not matter. It's your life. But you see, in taking decisions, it is wicked and selfish to not think about your children and not think about those connected to you as you take decisions. Are we together now? Yes. There are many people today who through their carelessness, they have left liabilities for society simply because they were not thoughtful enough. Any major decision you are about to take in life, especially your health, I want you to think about all those who are connected to you. What will happen now if I die? Some of you, for instance, you came from non-Christian families and you are the only Christian who is holding the banner of the gospel while waiting for the younger ones to grow. If you are careless with your life and you pass on now, what becomes of them? When you are thoughtful, you will not be careless with your life and your body. What happens to you now if you pass on, leaving three or four children who are barely in primary school? It's, it was not an attack that killed you. Just carelessness with your health. You see, when you walk yourself and stretch yourself and don't rest and you die, let me tell you what people will say. Hey, yeah. And that's the end of it. I made this mistake when we started newly. I would walk myself and not rest. My deliverance came when I went to a Catholic cathedral. I saw a crucifix and it occurred to me that I didn't die for any man. Now, I love people, don't get me wrong, but it was not my face that was on that crucifix. So I will be there for everybody as much as I can. That if Christ tarries at 84 years, surrounded with your children and your grandchildren, you have secured the covenant of life that nations will come to you to say, teach us the ways of the Lord. What did you find that has kept you in the midst of the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilences, the destruction that wastes in noonday? You have been able to have access to this mystery and you will tell them this is it. If you are from a family that has suffered untimely death, this is your chance. If